All right, we are out on beautiful East Lake Toho this morning. Um, I'm out here at a spot where I missed the six pounder last week, broke me off. Fish usually pile up along these edges here and they'll push a lot of shad around early in the morning. So that's why I'm out here now. Now, last time I was out here, I missed uh, probably a six pounder and uh, I caught a couple other little ones. So this time I'm hopefully gonna try to replicate that. I've got a better camera now, um, pick that up. so. The, Audio quality and, and visual should be a lot better. Uh, it also has wind reduction on it. Now, the other thing is, <laughs> even though I picked up the better camera, I forgot to bring the extra battery. So hopefully this lasts as long as it can. If not, I have the old camera for backup. So we're gonna do our best to fish this and see if we can get anything. I'm gonna be running uh, a lipless crank, which seems to be very effective out here. Some early morning top water. I already saw a few bass surface out here, chasing uh, some little bait fish. And then obviously a Senko. So let's give this a shot and see what happens. It's a beautiful morning out. Couldn't imagine spending it in a, in a prettier place. So even though that I'm standing, you can see the shoreline, I'm probably a quarter, quarter mile or more away from shore. I'm only in really about five or six feet of water. The, this lake is a little low. Looks like they drained it. Why they drained it, I'm not necessarily sure, but it's not as deep as it normally is. Um, it's water management's choice, not mine. So this is normally in that eight to 10 foot range. I'm sitting about five to six. So all those fish that were pushed back in there earlier, um, they are now kind of piled up out here. I just had one jump back there. So hopefully it starts to warm up just enough that the uh, fish start to push around and feed. When the sun gets higher, it clears out and it hits, we'll be able to see the, um, the bottom here. Water here is clear on this lake. If you've never fished East Lake Toho, it's completely different than West Lake Toho. The water is very clear uh, and you can have visibility up to maybe six to eight feet in certain places. It's got a hint of a tannic stain to it. Not very much. Uh, there's no, oh, that was a big bass. Did you guys see that? There's no um, offshore vegetation here. There's no hydrilla, there's none of that stuff. Uh, so most of the fishing is confined to these edges. I think that's close enough. Yeah, that's close enough. That's probably a five pound bass right there. So here's how I'm, I'm focusing, I'm fishing this. Just kind of biding my time, really. Throwing here and there. Really waiting for this fish to start surfacing. Like that guy was over there, but I'm not gonna move the kayak just yet. Once they start moving around, then I'm gonna start targeting where they're, they're splashing at. And sometimes the big fish, they don't make that big of a splash. It's just a, you just see, I hear a little ripple and a little, little, little tiny, almost like a drop. So we we'll do something a little bit different here. Put on a popper and see if we can't get this bass to react to the splashing. Oh, I thought he had it. I went, oh no, no, I'm all tangled up. Let's try this again. That bass completely whiffed on this. There he is. It's a good fish. Oh, he choked it too. Okay, 
Oh, that's in its gullet. Get in here, big boy. All right. Let's, uh... Let's see if I can do this without getting hooked. Yeah. So look at that. That's a beautiful three-pounder right there. Choked it. All right, let's do some minor surgery to get this out of here. There we go. Ladies and gentlemen, first pass of the morning. Kind of long, very pretty. Good three pounder. There he goes. All that in this little beat up old popper of mine. Now, I'm missing a, actually, missing a one of the treble hooks in the back. So it's not even a trouble anymore, it's a, it's a double hook. Just missed one on the fluke. I don't think he's very big. Wind has picked up just a little bit. I mean, we're only supposed to have four or five mile an hour winds. That's not that bad. But uh, it's picked up enough that I don't think they're gonna be, look, it's gonna be hard for them to see top water bait with a ripple going on and uh, the sun in their eyes, which isn't necessarily a bad thing because that'll make it easier for me to stalk them. Obscure my image a little bit better. So my theory as to why I was catching more fish or getting more bites last week than this week, um, especially on that lipless crank, is I think this fish were kind of trained in on uh, shiners last week. And the reason why is before I got here last week, there, there was a guy up uh, in the spot that I was just at, and he was fishing bait. And uh, he probably had, I heard him say, oh, there's one. So he, I think he caught, he said he caught two, because he's on the phone, but he was extra loud. Um, so he probably caught two off the live bait, and probably had this fish going on that. Because I went to the exact same spot right after he, uh, had finished and left, and that's where I, I caught my first fish and I lost that six pounder. As I was rigging up, <laughs> there's a bass that jumped behind me, chasing some bait fish. There they are over there. They we're in the right spot. That's weeds. So I'm put on a, uh, a small with this crank here. The canal opening is just up ahead of me about 100 yards. We'll work our way back to it. Fish tend to stack up on this outer edge that I've seen. And they chase bait fish all day. There's a fish. A little lipless crank. That's not bad. Beautiful one too. Here, there we go. First one of the day. Take a look at this bass. Beautiful fish. Not huge. Did that like a truck though. That's one. And uh, he tried to come back in the kayak. Well, oh, that's a good fish, I think. Oh, that is a good fish. Oh no! Well, pretty sure that's a gar. We'll throw out there anyway. But um, pretty sure. Let's see if uh, we can cruise around a bit and see if we can find some fish activity or some, something that's a little bit more structured 
it looks promising. Because while I agree fishing that this edge would be really productive, ah, not seeing anything. The other side looked better, but let's go down here a little bit and let's go back around and then I'll head back to see, uh, you know, see if there's anything up here. So that area back there might be worth taking a look at on the way back. But I got back there and it's about three feet, no more than four. Uh, pretty shallow. And most of these fish have been catching last time I was here and this time are out along this edge in this uh, like five to seven foot range. All right, so this GoPro is gonna die here soon. And I'm back here now, I'm probably in about four and a half feet of water. I'm moving away from the edge out there, I'm not seeing any activity out there. Plus, because the sun is coming up, I don't think there's enough shade out there for this fish to really want to chill out there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fish these edges now. With this grass here, all this grass was completely underwater uh, a couple weeks ago. So I'm going to try fishing these edges, see if we can catch some fish hiding in there, waiting for an ambush, and then uh, work my way back. Because I don't think the, even though I want to fish the outside edge, it might still be good back there but I haven't seen any activity along this side here. So I'm thinking the fish might be pushed back a little bit, might be a little bit shallower. Uh, this looks a little bit more appeasing to bait fish too, but I'm sitting in about four and a half feet of water. So it's still fairly deep. It's not super deep, but you can see we are not, we are not deep here at all. And in fact, if anything, this might be a little bit more difficult. It's ultra clear here as well. 